Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and check this out, my sponsor link to, they've got Ripple on the platform again, they've got special pricing opportunities on Ripple, whether you want to top off your position or make your first investment, download the app, or visit link to, it's l-i-n-q-t-o dot com, also check out their new uh, fast onboarding process, welcome, welcoming all investors from the U.S., so you're going to want to check that out. All right, moving along, interesting stuff today. You have to wonder if if the powers that be, for some sick reason, are just trying to piss off Americans at this point. This happened in California yesterday. California votes to approve $150,000 in taxpayer-funded home loans for illegal aliens. So we are now... Not only did they let millions of illegal aliens in, now, not us yet, but Californians are now supposed to pay for the illegal aliens to help them buy a house. It's not insulting enough that they let 20 million in and just opened up our border so that they could try to get reelected. That's not, that wasn't enough. They got to rub salt in the wound, including this. Eric Trump indicted again, they'll stop at nothing. I mean, this is getting, if it wasn't so scary and creepy about the idea that these, that people that are this evil have taken over this country, at this point, it's almost laughable if it wasn't so scary. But because, you know why it's, why this is so scary at this point? Folks, they're making it very obvious that the way that they hold Amer the American people in contempt and they have kind of an FU attitude, which tells me that if they're able to get away with winning this election somehow by some miracle or fixing something, if they're able to do that this time, these people are capable of anything. This is, this is, you know those guys over, I couldn't say it here on this channel or I'd be censored, but you know those guys over in Germany that started World War II? That's what this is like. <clears throat> That's what it's like has, been, has taken over the United States of America. Now, <clears throat> and I can say the word in the group at DAIXRP.com. Maybe I will. <laughs> um, this, th here's another thing. So, so... RFK decides he's going to support Donald Trump, and he says he's dropping out of a lot of the key races, including Michigan. So, and he knew it would help Trump when he did that. So, following Mich M Michigan's example, Wisconsin Elections Commission just voted five to one to keep RFK's name on the ballot against his will. So now Michigan and this this is how corrupt this system is now. Against his will, he wants his name off the ballot. And Michigan and Wisconsin are saying, no, we're going to keep it on there. Out of nowhere, Democrats have frozen all efforts to remove... Hold on a second. I got to answer that door. Okay, I'm back. I had to... Um, I'm checking the volumes now for Mr. B, who hates it when I check the volumes in the middle of the show. But I had to check... I had to go answer the front door. Um, and by the way... We, I know that you're all out there wondering, we have found, I, I misplaced it because somebody cleaned my desk off, but Johnny from the UK, you remember Johnny and his Zippo that he gave me at XRP Las Vegas? Well, somebody had put it in a box over here and I, I was going through the box and I found it. So don't worry people, it's back. Um, all right, so anyway, this is how, how corrupt things have gotten. Now let's move on to some crypto economic stuff. Here's Anthony Pompliano and I believe he's right. If we believe that the Fed, which has five and a half percent interest rates and can cut, it's like they reloaded their gun. And so now we're sitting here and we're saying, hey, the Fed's not out of the fight. The Fed took a water break, 
right? They went and they got a sandwich. They took a nap. They are fresh, ready to fight. And so if there is a market downturn or if they decide it's time, they're gonna fire everything they got, which means the playbook of the second half of 2020 is coming back and asset prices will absolutely rip because now the Fed's gonna stimulate the economy. The Fed has not been stimulating the economy and we're still at or near all time highs. Imagine what happens when they start the stimulation process. I do believe that things are about to get really interesting in the markets, crypto especially, uh, heading into late 2024. But I, I've been telling my wife for, I've been telling my wife for the last, since last year, I said, I believe 2024, 2025 is our year. I believe this is it. It's the year that XRP Unleashed, the documentary, is coming out. It's coming out in November. It's going to be, my understanding is that it's going to be on Apple TV and on Amazon Prime. And look at this announcement. This November, we will be conducting a set of limited premiere screenings prior to launch on streaming platforms. Members of the cast and crew will be in attendance at these special one-night-only events. If you know a theater owner, contact us as we want to support local and independent theaters. Tickets will go on sale in October. Screening cities, LA, Phoenix, Houston, Atlanta, Washington, New York, Boston. That's gonna be interesting and I will make sure, I was just talking to my wife this morning and uh, she said that she would go to the Atlanta one with me and I'm, I'm probably going to go to at least at least a few of these. We'll see. <clears throat> Check this out. I actually, I actually sent this to the documentary people this morning because this is important. Mr. Huber had pointed out 200 days ago the SEC OIG was in the final stages of their investigation into, into Hinman's criminal financial conflicts. It's time to tag Mark Fagel again and accuse him of supporting this charade. Mark, what's your honest approach on this? How long do final stages take? <laughs> I love that. Then Tristan Levitt from the Empower, he's the president of Empower. Uh, not only is the SEC OIG dragging its feet on releasing its report, but we have reason to believe that they may have failed to investigate whether Jay Clayton violated his ethics agreement like Bill Hinman did. I wrote the OIG six weeks ago. The decision this is a quote from his letter, I guess. The decisions made by Mr. Clayton during this three and a half years as SEC chairman should be evaluated by the SEC OIG to ensure that he properly avoided any financial conflicts of the sort that Mr. Hinman and the SEC's ethics office apparently failed to avoid or mitigate. Failure to include those issues in the SEC OIG's upcoming report or subsequent one would continue to erode the public's faith in the ability of the SEC, its ethics office, and its inspector general to identify, mitigate, and hold officials accountable for conflicts of interest like those that generated this controversy. And guess what? It's about to hit. It's about to hit uh, Amazon Prime and Apple TV. <laughs> so, it's coming, guys. American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, is seeking approval from regulators to, launch, to allow launch of trading of options tied to the price of Bitcoin in partnership with CF Benchmarks. And um, this is something that's been bugging me. I like this, this Whitney Webb. Um, she calls herself uh, contributing editor of Unlimited Hangout, author of One Nation Under Blackmail, follow me up. And she does, she does investigative journalism, and she's very suspicious <coughs> of, the, um, of the government and, and has all kinds of, you know, covers all kinds of what, what some would call conspiracies but really aren't. She does inve real investigative journalism and ties, you know, different people and agencies to each other and all this stuff. Well, but, and so she's very suspicious of anything the government's doing. However... She's not suspicious at all of Bitcoin, even though there's a video saying that Homeland Security met with the four Satoshis. She goes on all the Bitcoin maxi shows. She goes to the Bitcoin conferences, but she doesn't apply her natural skepticism to Bitcoin at all, even when presented with a video that should make her very skeptical and make her want to go investigate 
who really created Bitcoin. And so I called her out in a nice way. I said, I enjoy, I enjoy most of your thoughts on what government is up to behind the scenes, but I don't understand why you don't have the same skepticism about the government's involvement in Bitcoin. Here's a video where Homeland Security agent says Homeland, Homeland met with four Satoshis. Why don't you research this? And I gave her the video. So we'll see. Maybe she'll surprise us. And then check this out. Shady Elizabeth Warren. Look at this. This is from Perry Ann Boring from the Digital Commerce. Digital Chamber of Commerce. Rumor has it that Elizabeth Warren started the speculation about Kamala Harris considering, in other words, lied and just created it out of thin air about Kamala Harris considering Gary Gensler for Treasury Secretary. Warren is reportedly gathering polling data from Democratic voters to gauge their reaction. If data shows minimal impact, this could potentially clear the path for Gensler's nomination without significant fallout. However, Gensler would still likely face serious challenges in, in getting Senate confirmation. We can't underestimate Elizabeth Warren's opposition to crypto. Source X federal regulator. Folks, we, we can't let this happen. The, the last thing on the planet we want is for Gary Gensler to be rewarded for what he has done for the last few years. Attacking a, 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 everyday Americans instead of protecting them. Scott is a corrupt piece of you know what it needs to be treated as such I, i've heard a lot of different things so in court according to my sources inside the sec Ooh, rumors inside sources in the sec okay. he's toying with the idea of stepping down from the chairmanship role into a commissioner role okay. and we're hearing he is entertaining that because he may not be able to get a job anywhere else because he's that unpopular you know, there was this rumor floating around on the internet recently that uh, Kamala Harris was considering nominating him to Treasury Secretary. Right. So we're hearing that that actually was planted by Elizabeth Warren, who actually is the number one nemesis. I think she's number one. Gary Gensler is more so just operating at Do, her direction. Where does one begin and the other end, though? So, uh, and we're hearing the reason why she did that is because they, they're then planning to do some polling on how did that announcement impact her base. Who do you think would be a candidate for the chair position if Gensler were to step aside? I actually have information on this that I, I'm not at liberty to Come share. On, Mary, but... I do too. I know a name. I do know a name. Okay, here's Brooks Entwistle from Ripple. It can be around central bank digital currencies. It can be around NFTs. We actually believe and put a lot of faith behind this World Economic Forum report that says that just a huge percent, 10% of the world's GDP could be tokenized by 2027. That's pretty uh, in some form course. or another. And if you really believe be around you know how much liquidity is going to be in this system it's not two trillion dollars folks you're talking getting in getting into the 30 to 100 trillion dollars it's gonna it's the, the game is about to change completely um, this is interesting right here this would go in the all the world's a stage file um, this, he's saying it's all just a show and he's talking, he's showing a, uh, this is a conference that's about to go on. Peer-to-peer -peer financial systems workshop 2024. Um, look who's going to be there. These guys, you got senior director at Ripple right here. And then you've got Marcus Treacher, who's previously of Ripple, that's going to be there. International Bank of Settlement, Bank for International Settlements. There's a guy from IBM, Chicago Booth School. Then look how we who we have here. Oh, Gary Gensler's going to be there. There's a guy from MIT. Let's see if there's anybody else that jumps off the page. Head of Stress Test Modeling Division at ECB. <clears throat> Folks, we live in interesting times. Now, in DAIXRP.com, we've watched this movie unfold for five years, folks. We've now identified who all the bad guys are that need to be swept out of this, this country. Now they're, they're lie, they are being wrapped in all of their lies and all of it is being exposed. Now I'm going to show you in the last 24 hours 
some of what's been exposed. I'm going to first remind, refresh you on who the bad guys are. I'm not going to use the terminology, but it starts with the first word starts with a D, and the second word starts with an S. And I'm going to refresh your memory on who's in it. Who are who are the the corrupt bad guys? Who, who's running the show? Who's running this country? Because it's not Joe Biden. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to shut. They're all look. They've all been caught in their lies now. Now it comes down to do we have a country? And if we do, when do these people go to prison and get tried for their crimes? That's where we're at. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. They're all busted. It's just a matter of whether we have a country or not. Now, here we go.